Hey everyone, this is Nick here, and I'm going to show you a quick PowerPoint design tip uh, for getting a single image to be multi-color. So who doesn't want a rainbow unicorn? This is a pretty nice icon of a unicorn, and I've made it into these rainbow color palettes. You can also do the same thing, but you can do it as a, an applied gradient. So I'm going to show you both techniques in this video. Now the first thing you need to do is get a rainbow color palette or whatever color palette you want to put in there. I just got this from Google and copied it as an image and put it into my slide for further reference. Now the first thing I'm going to do is insert the icon that I want, and today we're just going to look at that fun little unicorn. So we're going to open that icon image. I'm going to search for unicorn. See if that works there. You get a narwhal or a unicorn. I'm going to go ahead and type, type in this unicorn. We're going to enter that. I'm going to hold shift and this arrow key to make it a little bit larger so everything is proportionate when you drag it to make it bigger. Now in this first technique here, you're going to actually need to have seven of these unicorns inserted in your slide because we have seven different colors. So I'm going to go ahead and just push Control D to duplicate this. Now I have two unicorns. And I'm going to go ahead and push Control D again. Now I have three, four, five, six, and seven. OK, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select all of these like that, drag it with the mouse. Looks like a couple of them didn't make the list. Oops, actually, I'm just going to push Control A that um, selects everything on my slide. I'm going to push Shift and then unselect the um, rainbow color palette image. But now all of my icons are selected, and I'm going to go ahead, use the al align tools. I'm going to align these to the top so they're all kind of together, but I can still see them. Now over here, this is my final unicorn. I want that to be this sort of violet color. So I'm going to right click, go to Format, and we're going to use the paint the paintbrush or the paint bucket tool, the eyedropper tool, sorry, um, to update the fill color. So in the fill color, you click on this paint bucket icon, and then down here on the eyedropper tool, we're going to go ahead and select that color, and then this uh, changes there. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to drag that over here. Then we have this next, I want that to be purple, so I'm going to do the same technique with the eyedropper tool, make that purple. Mm, looks like it didn't work. Let's try it one more time. Perfect. Then we're going to use this one. Same thing for the blue. Oh, it's going to put that. Doesn't matter where they're positioned because we're going to reposition them after we're done with all the coloring. So go ahead and do the green. Do the yellow. We'll get that orange. And finally, the red. All right, now I have all seven of my rainbow unicorns. Now I need to go ahead and select them all <clears throat> and put them right on top of each other. So Control A to select everything. I'm just going to hold Shift and unselect the palette. Now I'm going to go use my Arrange Tools, and I'm going to click Center so they're all centered. And then I'm going to go ahead and click Middle so that they're all together. Now this is perfect. This is my perfect uh, unicorn. Now what I want to do is position my palette above just so I can get an equal sort of area um, within each of, uh, equal area within each of the colors here. And you can see that PowerPoint is smart. It has these auto fit tools to tell you when the, the last part of the image is. I'm going to actually just make it a little bit less than that um, so that it um, hits the actual unicorn right there. This is going to be perfect. Okay, now for each of these we're going to use our crop uh, our crop tools on each of the images. So this top unicorn is the violet color <clears throat> and we are going to go ahead and click on crop and then I'm just going to move the crop over to the area above that matches that unicorn. Now look at this. You can see now I have this part of the unicorn in violet. This is purple and I'm going to do the same thing with the crop tools and crop this so that it goes right to the edge of that purple. Perfect. Click crop again. Now I have two. Now do the same thing. See, it's a pretty cool technique. Now this is, of course, just kind of a fun little thing. But you might be able to imagine how you can use this technique with other uh, photos. I've seen some cool things with laying a black and white photo on top of a color photo. Kind of transitions from black and white into color. It's pretty cool. 
go ahead and finish that. Now my yellow one, we're gonna go over here. Perfect, and then orange, crop, right there. Oops, actually, I went too far. I wanna go back just that way, and then the tail can be red, push crop. All right, and there you have your whole rainbow unicorn. Now, if I were so to select all of these images, I'm actually gonna push control all again, unselect the palette. Now what I can do is um, right click and group them all together so they're one big group. And now you can treat this whole thing as one image. Now if I wanted, say, a black outline on these, I would just go up here to the format graphic, go to line, and let's go ahead and click solid line. You can see the line already shows up. I'm just gonna make it nice and black right there. And that's pretty cool. That looks pretty nice. All right, now let's figure out how we can do uh, this gradient fill too. So I'm just gonna move this over here. And what we're gonna do is insert another icon for the unicorn. And sometimes it takes a little bit longer for this menu to pop up depending on how fast your internet goes. So here's our other icon here. Now in order to do this, now you might know that under the paint bucket in the fill colors, there's usually this option that says gradient fill, but for icons that are SVG images, scalable vector graphics, they don't have the image to, or they don't have the option to, to color each of these as a gradient. So what you need to do is convert this to a shape, and you can do that by right click, and then click on convert to shape right here. Now this is a shape and everything in it um, is, a, is actually a grouped, uh, a grouped shape. I'm gonna make sure that this is grouped so that the entire thing is there. And now, since I've already used the paint bucket or, and the eyedropper tool to get us those rainbow colors before in this file, if I go here to solid fill and I drop down the paint bucket, you'll see all of my rainbow colors right here. And I'm actually now, I can select the gradient fill and I'm gonna to go to, it actually already did it for me because I had already set this up. So let's just delete all these so that you can see how, oh, it looks like it's not gonna do that. Um, the first thing that you need to do when you have this gradient is select the direction. So right here under the linear presets, I'm gonna do that. And then you have all these directions. And I like to do just the linear from left to right. There's no angle in there. We're just gonna do it like that. And then you have to in you have to add the new gradient stops for, the, for each individual color. So this first color is gonna be that red color all the way at the end. So I'm gonna make sure that that's the red right here. And then this last color here, I'm gonna click this, and I'm gonna make sure that's the violet. And I think it already is that sort of pinkish violet but now I can add new stops here so I'm gonna add a few more I'm gonna add this one and this is gonna be the orange color so we're gonna go ahead and do that and then I'm gonna add another gradient stop I'm gonna drag that over here and we're gonna make that into the yellow and then I'll add another gradient stop and we will make that into the green and the next gradient stop will make that into the blue and then maybe one more gradient stop we want for that deep purple. And so you can really set this up however you want to play around with that. You can do now the same thing with the line. So under here, lined image, I'm gonna go ahead and make that and click on that black. You can adjust the weight of that line to make it really thick, or you can make it really thin, however you most like it. So there are a couple ways to work with icons, shapes, and getting different sorts of fill colors uh, in your graphics. If you like this video, I hope you give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to my channel for different updates on design tips, data design tips, data visualization tips in Excel and PowerPoint. I really appreciate all the likes and subscribes and you'll get notifications each time I put up a new video there. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.